pizza. In fact, that's how Domino's actually got started as the only delivery chain. Uh, and that's what happened. Joey started to eat. He got an appetite. And he put his body weight back on and began to get healthy. The second thing that every marijuana smoker knows is that marijuana is the greatest violence in the history of the world. It can replace almost every form of tranquilizer and, and some of the heavier drugs they give people for depression. So what happens? Joey became a cooled out kid. He doesn't get violent anymore. And the third thing that happens when you smoke a joint is you get chatty. Now, Joey had never communicated, never had a word. He doesn't have speeches today, but he can communicate a little bit, let people know what he wants. Uh, he was able to travel to New York, and now they're traveling someplace else, and he loves it. And he's an active kid who's now a happy kid and has a great family. And the more and more stories I learned, the more I became determined to work for legalization of medical marijuana in states that don't have it. And you know, 16 states have it now, plus Washington, D.C. Another half a dozen states have it on the ballot. 14 states have decriminalized marijuana. And this year on the ballot, California, Colorado, Washington will be full legalization initiative. And I believe through education, those initiatives will go forward, especially medical marijuana in this state. Nobody speaks to seniors. When Prop 19 was defeated in California, I looked at the exit polls and I saw that seniors voted 65% against. That's my generation. We invented marijuana as it's known today. I mean, we were Woodstock. We were the people who gave the country a volunteer army. And we made a difference. And marijuana was part of our generation. So I was shocked when, when my guys were voting no. And I realized nobody was talking to them except the beer lobby. The beer lobby was telling them, you don't want those stoners on the road. And of course, you know, a government report just came out a couple of weeks ago from a 20-year study of drivers. And in fact, people who smoke pot are actually a lot more cautious. And in areas where they have legal medical marijuana, Fatalities, traffic fatalities, are down almost 10%, and alcohol consumption, 5%. And if you've got a kid in university, one makes sense and the other doesn't. So why why here in Florida talking to seniors? You say they, they, they haven't been talked to before. What, what's your strategy? Florida is my home state. I live in West Palm Beach. Uh, I meet people every day say, when are we going to get it? People with arthritis, people who have trouble sleeping, who would like to be able to take a smoke a joint and go to sleep, instead of taking that stuff with the butterfly commercial, where they spent half the commercial telling you, leads to depression, rages, walk in your sleep, talk in your sleep, your tongue may swell up and you may die. There's a medicine that, that can't do you any harm. No one has ever died marijuana, and it's the oldest medicine known in history. It's been used for over 5,000 years. A temple like this place is incredibly appropriate. First of all, the word cannabis, which is the proper name, marijuana was a name that was made up uh, by Hearst for his newspapers to try and get it banned. Nobody even really knows what it means, but it's the word we use today. Cannabis comes from the Hebrew cannabis, and it was not only used as a medicine, it was the anointing oil. It was the oil that lit people's homes, lit the temples. It was used for clothing. Almost all homespun clothing was made out of cannabis fibers, hemp, not cotton. Cotton was much too expensive to even try and spin. It was only for the rich people. Uh, when we read in our history books, that the pioneers going west wore homespun. Homespun was hemp. And so the reform movement has been very pro-medical marijuana. This is a very appropriate place. And I've been made welcome in several reform temples. The program is open to everybody, not just members of the temple and not just Jews. Uh, but this is a, a great facility.
Civil Duty. What has been the response that you've gotten from people that you've talked to? I would think that you know some seniors are have to say to you, when are we going to get it? I'm sure that others have a set notion of what marijuana is, and it's hard to convince them. No, it's not. Uh, the first big show that we did was at the Women's Auxiliary at Century Village in Pembroke Pines. The ladies who came, most of them didn't even know what they were coming to. They come every Tuesday afternoon, rain or shine, for some free snacks and, and they'll see a movie or hear a speaker. And when they walked in, and there were almost a hundred of them, they looked around and they said, marijuana? Who invited that? What, what's this for? And by the end of the show, more than 90% of the audience walked up to the tables and said, please, let me sign a letter to my congressman. Let me sign a letter to my representative. I'm old. I can't wait. We need this stuff now. And how come you didn't bring samples? <laughs> that is actually the typical reaction. You'll see it here at the end of this show. And if you've seen the little video that's on the silvertour.org, what you saw is what really happened. It was spontaneous, and it's been the same every place we put on a Silver Tour show. I have a request from every state in the union to bring the Silver Tour. And when we can find enough sponsors, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, give, me a, give me a sense of some of the statistics that are out there that you think are most egregious when it comes to the war on drugs and the effects that it has on our society. When someone's arrested for marijuana, it doesn't only affect them, it affects their entire family. We arrest 850,000 people a year just for possession, or mainly for possession of marijuana. It costs the cities and townships $2,500 on the average just to arrest and book them, not even including court costs. People have the impression that, well, we don't really send people to jail anymore for that. That's not true. Half of those people will do prison time. The cost most states and the government say to keep someone in prison for marijuana is thirty or $35,000 per year per person. Now, we're not talking 400,000 people in jail. We're talking 400,000 people a year. There are several million people jail in state, federal, and county prisons for nothing but possession of marijuana. And the billions of dollars it's costing can be saved, but more important, you're saving lives. Because when someone's arrested for marijuana, their family usually spends every penny they can find and ends up broke and very rarely wins the legal battle. Uh, if it's a college student, which it often is, they'll lose their scholarships. A lot of schools will throw them out. That's the end of their college career. And for the most part, these are our brightest and best. The country is losing billions every year. And what's really insidious <coughs> now is the prison industries in federal prison and in the state prisons and worst of all, the private prisons. They lobby very hard for harsh marijuana penalties because who do they want in their factories? They want potheads. They want drug offenders, people with no violence. The private prisons tend to reject bank robbers, violent prisoners. They want people who will go into their factories and make things for a couple of cents an hour. And these are things that compete with private industry. So much of our uh, defense materials, uniforms, helmets, uh, the wiring harnesses for jet planes are made in prison industries. They're not made very well, and they're made with the cheapest labor you can find and people who are not particularly pro-government. And we are losing millions of jobs every year. You know, people know that when they call a lot of companies, the phone isn't answered in India or Pakistan. It's answered in a prison in the United States of America. 
and the vast majority of those people are nonviolent drug offenders because they're the only people who are literate enough and trustworthy enough to work in those jobs. And so those companies work with the politicians in order to keep or enhance the harsh penalties for marijuana. And they're making billions, but the general public's losing billions. Isn't marijuana a gateway drug? And if you do legalize it, medical or otherwise, aren't people, you know, aren't people going to end up going on doing bad things, end up being violent, abuse, even if it's more than use, ruining their lives doing marijuana? It, aren't there risks involved with legalization that you're not... Let's talking? take the statement. Marijuana is a gateway drug. 